So today's community question over on Post Pro List, I was asked about tracking roads for a drone that orbits, kind of like this video here. They want to know how to do it in DaVinci Resolve and Fusion. Uh, and so that's what we're gonna dive into. If you have a question of your own for DaVinci Resolve, Fusion, or Fairlight, you can jump over to Post Pro List, ask your question there. Myself or the community should be able to help you out. So we're gonna tackle this. He actually sent over some video footage that we're gonna work with. I just brought it into DaVinci Resolve. If we take a look at this footage, there really isn't a lot of orbiting. It, we're just kind of going towards the city a little bit, and then right at the end, there's like a little bit of a, like a rotation, but not really much. So hopefully I can show how to do this with the footage in which he uh, sent me. So we're just gonna go to a frame that has pretty much the majority of whatever it is uh, that we wanna have this effect on right in the middle of the screen or the best view of whatever that is, right? So for now, I'm just gonna go to the beginning of the frame because we're just going to track this road that comes from the bridge into the city. And we'll just go to the beginning. I will grab a background node. Oh, let me zoom in so you can actually read these nodes. I'll just grab a background node and we will grab that yellow color. So there is our background node. I'll just view the uh, media in or out. And we'll just connect this background into our the, the output of our media in, which will then make a merge. We'll click on the merge, and I'm just gonna bring this blend down a little bit to get that highlighter effect. I feel like this is probably the closest to uh, what was in that uh, demo video that he sent in. And then from here, all we're gonna do is you can either use a polygon or a B-spline, it's up to you. And we're just going to um, make a path around the area that we wanna have uh, shown in this. So I'm just gonna grab a B-spline. It's just a s softer uh, from point to point and we will just connect this in and then I'm just going to go around one side of the road, come back down, go down the other side of the road. And so we can zoom in just holding shift and mouse wheeling in and we will click. You wanna have as few points as possible but as many points that is necessary that makes sense. So that's what we'll be doing here. And somewhere over there is going to be the end of that road. Bring it over to here. Bring this down like this. And there we go. So now if we take a look at it, it's not great. We have to move it a little bit here, but that's what we're gonna do first, so clicking on our B-spline and then just adjusting all the points. If we were to just click and move, we're going to add additional points. So to not do that, if we come up to the top bar up here, we have this edit only mode or shift M. We'll click on that and that'll only allow us to move the points that are here. And so that's what we'll do first. We'll just move these points to be over the whole street. And see there, we're gonna come back down, bring this down a little bit, something like that. And I think the majority of this is good from here. All right. Like that. Okay. So that is our whole street kind of covered. That's what we'll be showing here. And now that we have this set, one thing that uh, masks automatically add in is the shape, shape animation. So I just want to remove that. So I'll just right click here and go down to remove. That'll remove that so we're not playing around with a lot of different animation uh, tools all at once. From here, what we're gonna do is now we want to have access to the data for every one of these points. So all I'm gonna do is highlight all of the points. We're gonna go to one of the points, right click on it, then go down to polygon and go publish, publish points. So now this will show all of the points for all of these points here. If you wanna know which of these points uh, in our mask is connected to any of these, what you can do is you can click on one of the points again and then go to polygon and then we'll come down here to point numbers and now we can see the different numbers here that will represent these points over here. Because we're on our um, primary frame that we set this up, what we'll do is we'll just go down and we will click all of the keyframes so that we have them all keyframed for this particular frame. So right here is our playhead, we're at frame zero. 
what I'm gonna go is to the last usable frame, right? So before we have that little jerking motion. So I would say right there is probably one of the last ones. And then from here, what we're gonna do is now we're going to move um, all of our points to have a new position that is uh, in this road, right? right? So if we take this point, we move it down, take that point, move it down. Okay, so that is our second frame, right? So we have this one down here, which is at 1376, and we have our first one, which somehow got messed up as well. And then if I click on this again to see our other one, that is our second one. Just with all rotoscopy, now we wanna to go to the middle of those points that we just added. So somewhere in the middle, so here, and now we just want to adjust to get everything lined up again. So I'll quickly do that, line up everything. That looks all good. Bring this back in a little bit, bring this in, bring this up. Okay, so now we're looking pretty good. And what you'll notice is now we have three keyframes. So the first one here, the one in 700, and this other one over 1300. Now, we just need to look at in between where our new keyframe is and our previous keyframe. So we'll look here, and we'll look over here, and then adjust it accordingly. The idea here is that we won't, don't wanna go through every single frame and make keyframes. What we want is for fusion, to automatically move the mask, but we're giving it um, references to, you know, in between here. So just interpolate the different, the space in between, and it will save a lot of work uh, in between. So that's looking good there. So remember, we had this one here at 700, so we did that one. So now let's go to the other side in the middle. So over here, and that's pretty much the gist of it. And we'll just keep going until we feel like when we jump to a new set of keyframes, there's no moving. So now we added this keyframe here in the 300s, and then this one over in the 1000. So we'll go to the left and right of this 300. So we'll go somewhere in here, and we'll take a look at that. For the most part, I feel like that is fine. Maybe slide this up ever so slightly. That's looking okay. Maybe slide this one up ever so slightly, something like that. And then to the other side of that 300 keyframe, that's looking pretty good. Now we had this other keyframe here at 1,000, so we'll go to the left of that. This might need to come up ever so slightly. That's looking good. And then the other side of that, which is over here, and just slide that up just a little bit, and maybe this one down. But for the most part, that is pretty good as well. So I would say for the most part, this will follow, as we go through here, would follow this pretty well, okay? And that should be the majority of work that we would have to do, right, to highlight something like this. Now, if you wanted to use a tracker, you could track each and every one of these points as well. So I'll quickly show you that, right? So let's say we take this one, uh, which one here? This one, number one, and I will just remove all the tracking data here. So just double clicking, we'll remove all that tracking data. Now I can right click on here, go to modify with, and go to track, and then uh, go over into our modifier. So we have this tracker one. So this is for this first tracker. As you can see, there's a point here. I'm just gonna switch this over to the point tracker. I like it a little bit more, and we're not gonna do every frame. So let's just do every five frames. And all I'll do is just move this, or actually, I don't have any source in here, so I need to put a source in here. So we're gonna grab our media in, we'll click and drag, drop up here, so now it knows what we're tracking. So now clicking on the B-spline, as I move this, we can see, this actually should show it. There we are. So we can see now in our tracker, where we're tracking, I'm just gonna track this sign right here, and I'll make the bounds just slightly smaller and click on this again, go over into modifiers. <clears throat> and now we can track this, where are we? We're here at the end, so I'm just going to track backwards. All right, so now that I track that, if we take a look at that one point, we can see that it's pretty locked on, right? 
stays there, but obviously the it's way too high. So now we can do an offset. So if I come into modifiers, go into our tracker, and now we have this X, Y offset for where we want this point to actually be. It's still tracked to, um, it's still tracked to the sign, but now we're just offsetting the output of the tracker so that it stays, so that this line stays within the boundaries of this road. So now if we, as we go through here, we can see that that stays there. So if you really wanted to, you could use a tracker on all of these, but you can, you know, do it this way as well. You can manually do some points or uh, automatically do them all. Now, I do wanna show you one other thing. Go back into this video. If we take a look at the, this point down here, after the fact, you could make a shape and then just cut it out. So I wanna quickly show you that. So here is, let's say we take out this, I don't even know what this is, maybe a train station or something. Let's say I wanna take that out. So after our B spline, I will just add in a polygon and I will just go around this. And then in the polygon, we will just change the paint mode to subtract. And so now I have this road tracked and I have this as a little cutout. Now, just like with our uh, B spline, you're going to have to either track this or manually animate it. It's up to you. The other things you could also do is you could do the magic mask. And the magic mask, I'm actually going to add in the video, right? So we have this video um, playing here and because we need a source and I'm just going to select all of that and that's looking pretty good. Uh, and from here, the B spline, because since this is actually what we want, I'm going to go into the garbage mat and then invert it. Oops, that's the wrong one. So I'll just, I'm just right click dragging into here so I can pick garbage mat and then in the gar or in here in the mats, we'll go in the garbage mat and we'll just invert that. So then that's not what I want. And then let's invert the um, mask. So now we have that little bit cut out and then we will come in. And so now we have this off using the AI. Obviously, if you want this to be cut out a little bit more clicking on it, we can then put some more like negative stuff along this and it'll tighten that up a little bit. So then there we go. Now all you would have to do is just track that and now you are using some of the AI tools if you have access to those. So a couple of different options here to do this. So I think that concludes this effect. If you have any questions, you can go over to Post Pro List, ask your question there. Someone should be able to help you out. If you haven't seen yet, over on my website, under free titles, I did add more to the free bundle. Currently there are 51. They will slowly get added to the community version of the pack. If you did wanna support the pack, you can become part of the insiders, which then you have access to a few more titles. They will slowly get released to the community pack, but if you read through this, I will consistently add more stuff to the insiders that will then get added to the community pack. Just a way to um, help support the creation of this pack that hopefully will become one of the biggest free packs uh, in the community. But with that being said, my name's Justin. Thanks so much for watching. Until next one, guys, have a good one.